Our second speaker is Portia Stewart. She is a junior religious education major, and her church and speech pencil is Wooden Spoon. Okay, so research. 
researcher. Researcher. Researcher Elena Kaponen from the University of South Australia says that we should have no more than six cups of coffee. That anything other than beyond six cups increases our uh, risk for cardiovascular disease by 22%. So why do we overconsume coffee? Well, let's find out. So our brain produces this chemical called adenosine. Adenosine binds to these receptors in our brain as long as we're awake. And once it binds to these, these uh, receptors, it causes fatigue. Well, what coffee caffeine does is it takes on the structure as adenosine. It, it uh, binds to the receptors, which blocks adenosine and gives us that alertness which is good when we're tired. But the problem is the long-term use of caffeine. <coughs> the long-term use is problematic because then your brain creates more receptors. And in doing that, your, our, the brain also creates more adenosine. So then we're taking in too much caffeine, more than our body can break down at one time because we're trying to combat the fatigue. Right? So what are some of the symptoms of overusing caffeine? Let's look at some of the symptoms. Some of the symptoms, headaches, arthritis, insomnia, anxiety, depression, hypertension. These are symptoms for, from overuse. Now I'm not saying caffeine or coffee is bad for you. What I am telling you is, cut down on the amount that you put into your body. It's not the fact that you're using it, because we all know that coffee can have benefits to it, right? Mm -hmm. It increases energy, it promotes um, metabolism, give us um, energy, right? But it's the overuse and overconsumption of it. Cup after cup after cup is not good for us. So how can we cut down and reduce the dependency of coffee? Well, any change is not good, right? We all, well, I'm not gonna say change is not good, but we find change difficult sometimes, right? Well, we can make minor changes without totally cutting it out. So let's limit the intake. While CDC says you can take in up to no more than 400 milligrams, Let's cut that down to two to three hundred milligrams. How about we take in a balanced meal and increase our water intake? That right there gives us energy. Exercise. That promotes energy right there. Versus taking in a whole bunch of caffeine, right? Time management. If we manage our times right as students, preparing, uh, say we have a big, a big assignment. Instead of waiting until the last minute to do that assignment where we know we're up all night and now we have to take in some more caffeine, let's start doing that assignment ahead of time. Yeah. Maybe a week ahead of time, doing a little bit at a time. Time management. And most importantly, get sleep. Right, Andrew? Yeah. <laughs> so, my job here was not to convince you not to drink caffeine. Again, just to cut back on caffeine. So we went through some of uh, the consumption, the overuse, the amount that we should be taking in, and how to reduce some of the um, dependency on caffeine. And if you really want to stop drinking caffeine, I would highly recommend this book. But again, I'm not promoting you to stop drinking caffeine, just to cut back. Take care of your body and your body's